Good evening, I'm Bryant Gumbel coming to you from the floor of Philadelphia Spectrum. Tonight there was to have been a coast-to-coast -coast celebration of American entertainment, but the crowning of a national collegiate basketball champion here in Philadelphia and the Academy Awards that were scheduled for later tonight in Los Angeles have been tempered considerably by the events of this afternoon in Washington, D.C. For those of you who may not have heard or may be tuning in late, there was an assassination attempt, an attempt on the life of President Reagan today in Washington. Six shots were fired into the presidential crowd, wounding one policeman, one Secret Service agent, wounding White House Press Secretary James Brady in the head. He is in critical condition right now and wounding the president. A bullet penetrated his left lung. That bullet was surgically removed this afternoon. Should further developments warrant it, we will be going back to NBC News for updates. At any event, we will be checking back at halftime and immediately after this game to update you on the events of today in Washington. In light of what happened today in Washington and in light of the Academy's decision to postpone the Academy Awards until tomorrow night, the question becomes, why telecast this basketball game? Why even play it? Well, we do not minimize the gravity of the situation. But due to the recent developments concerning the report that the president is in the recovery room in stable and good condition, and since NBC News has determined that fulfillment of our responsibility no longer dictates our staying on the air continuously, and since the NCAA has opted that this championship game between Indiana and North Carolina will be played, we at NBC will televise this championship game. Our hearts and prayers and those of a nation are with the president in Washington, D.C., but for the next two hours, our professional efforts will be directed here in Philadelphia and the national championship game that follows. In Philadelphia's spectrum, the college basketball season that started four months ago will end tonight in a matchup of classic proportions. Coach Bobby Knight has been here before, five years ago in the same building. His Indiana Hoosiers won it all. This year, with power and precision, they've routed all postseason opponents. North Carolina's Dean Smith, too, has reached this stage before. This is his sixth coaching appearance in the Final Four, but he's never won the final game. To alter that record, he's come to Philly with college basketball's most powerful front line. All other crowning dreams have been shattered. All first place efforts derailed, all title shots rejected. This championship night belongs to two traditional powers, the Hoosiers of Indiana and the Tar Heels of North Carolina. This is it, the National Collegiate Basketball Championship is brought to you by Midas, celebrating its 25th anniversary. It pays to Midas size. We'd like to alert our local stations along the line. There will be no news update coming up shortly, but we will be going to a station break. For now, we are getting set for North Carolina, Indiana for the matchups. Let's go to Dick and Billy now. All right, Bryant. While there are great individual players in this game, it is a coaches contest. Two of the very best in the nation, Dean Smith of North Carolina, Bobby Knight of Indiana. This man lost in the finals in 74, won it in 77. You know how both of them feel right now. Right now, they're breaking out of the heat crash. Their palms are getting wet. Dean Smith has never won the championship after being here three times. He got the monkey on his back. It's unfair. He's a great coach. He brought us back the gold in 72 for Montreal. But Dean, yes, it is hot in the kitchen tonight. On Bobby Knight's side, his real pressure was in 76. He was rated number one in the polls then, and he had to win it. But like the, uh, Coach Wooden said, it's easy to win one, but very difficult to win the second one. Indeed. You have about 10 seconds to give us your thoughts. Well, Dick, these guys are entirely different in style of play. One a man-to-man, -man, one a multiple defense guy. They're entirely different people, but they have maybe two ways to do something, but it always comes out right for both of them. They're great coaches. Now the Hoosiers of the Big Ten, North Carolina, the Atlantic Coast Conference, Brian. All right, Dick, thank you. Bobby Knight against Dean Smith, Big Ten against ACC, Indiana against Carolina for a national title. We'll get to it right after these messages from your local station. Philadelphia Spectrum, the 43rd NCAA Basketball Championship. Indiana's irascible Bobby Knight, he won it here five years ago against Carolina's Dean Smith in his third attempt in the finals. North Carolina, the Atlantic Coast Conference with an awesome front line against Big Ten champion Indiana. The Hoosiers have won each tournament game in overpowering fashion. This is it as NBC Sports presents the 1981 National Collegiate Basketball Championship. Tonight from the Spectrum in Philadelphia, it's Indiana's Hoosiers against the Tar Heels of North Carolina. Brought to you by 
Chevrolet and your Chevy dealer who want to keep America rolling right now. By Bell System Yellow Pages. Take the first step. Let your fingers do the walking through the Bell System Yellow Pages. By RCA Video Disc. Bring the magic home on RCA. And by Anheuser-Busch St. Louis. Brewers of Michelob. Put a little weekend in your week. The Spectrum in Philadelphia. This night is a very special one and has been for the players, the athletes, the fans, because it's tonight that the National Collegiate Basketball Champion is crowned. But in light of the events today in Washington, D.C., it's quite a paradox. There is the excitement and the, the thrill that everyone here will join in in the participation of this event at the same time. Uh, the happiness of the recent news that the president apparently is going to be all right. But throughout the day, in the backs of every player, everyone in this room, we all thought about what had happened in that tragic event today. And the spirit of sports has been to rally. And, in a moment, they're going to announce here at the Spectrum for the crowd a moment's silence. And all of us around America felt the sting of those bullets today. It's something for all of us to think about. And may all of our prayers and best wishes go to those four men involved and their families. Join us now from the Spectrum in Philadelphia for that moment. Ladies and gentlemen, if I could have your attention for just a moment. The National Collegiate Athletic Association wants you to know that the condition of President Reagan is reported as good. He is out of surgery, and the prognosis for a complete recovery is excellent. In view of the tragic developments today, we have asked the Reverend Dr. Donald Bolton, Vice President for Student Affairs at the University of North Carolina, to lead us in a prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we ask thy special blessing on the President of the United States, Ronald Reagan. Be with him and give him thy healing strength. Be with those who are with him and close to him. Be with those who are injured in protecting him. Let us join now in silent prayer for our President. Amen. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please rise and join in the singing of our national anthem, played by the Indiana University Pep Band under the direction of Will England. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the starting lineups for tonight's championship game. At a forward for the University of Indiana, number 30, a 6A junior from Galveston, Indiana, Ted Kitchell. Oh, big man with a great perimeter touch, scored 40 against At Illinois earlier this year. At a forward for the University year. of North Carolina, number 52, a 6'9 sophomore from Gascogne, North Carolina, James Wood. He's Carolina's leading rebounder. At a forward for Indiana, number 32, a 6'10 junior from Indianapolis, Indiana, Landon Turner. Turner scored 20 in the win Saturday against LSU. At a forward for the University of North Carolina, number 30, a 6'6 senior from Gray, Georgia, Al Wood. A record in the semifinal round, Wood scored 39. At center for Indiana, number 45, a 6'9 senior from Anderson, Indiana, Ray Tolbert. Bobby Knight says he's the most valuable player in the Big Ten this year. At 
at center for the University of North Carolina, number 41, a 6'9 freshman from Latham, New York, Sam Perkins. Unanimously picked as the rookie of the year in the ACC. And a guard for Indiana, number 11. A 6'1 sophomore from Chicago, Illinois, Isaiah Thomas. A consensus All-American as a sophomore. And a guard for the University of North Carolina, number 21. A 6'2 junior from the Bronx, New York, Jimmy Black. He was superb in defending Isaiah Thomas in the Carolina win earlier. And a guard for Indiana, number 24. A 6'6 junior from Indianapolis, Indiana, Randy Whitman. And a second team academic All-American. Number 11, a 6'3 senior from Vienna, Virginia, Mike Pepper. He symbolizes the spirit of the complimentary players. Bobby Knight and head coach for the North Carolina Tar Heels, Dean Smith. Bobby Knight, he has won more games at a younger age than anyone in major college basketball history. And Dean Smith, six times in the final four, looking his for his first national championship. The scene is set at the Spectrum in Philadelphia, but there are more important news developing in Washington. For an update, let's go to NBC News. One minute play, North Carolina won the opening tap. There was a foul on Kitchell of Indiana, and eventually James Worthy scored on a short jumper from the lane. Two nothing, Carolina leading Indiana. Indiana in the red with a ball. First possession for the Hoosiers. We'll introduce the players. This is Whitman, 24. Kitchell, Turner, and Tolbert on the front line. Isaiah Thomas in the far corner. Kitchell, got there, rebound Black of North Carolina. It's Black and one guard with Pepper the other, and a great front line. Al McGuire calls it the best front line in college basketball. Worthy, Perkins with the ball now, and Al Wood, a sensational shooter. Five seconds, and a jump ball is called. Good call right there. What you're finding is tremendous intensity on both teams from a defensive standpoint. Last time, Pepper got picked off and had to have a bad switch on Kitchell, but you're seeing Indiana putting a lot of pressure on the ball. It'll be Perkins. With superior height, a two-inch advantage against Kitchell. Last touch by Whitman of Indiana. That ball wasn't really tossed quite high enough. You get two leapers of that ability, you've got to get it up in the air. I'd imagine the officials are a little nervous at this point. Well, what's happening here, the officials are trying to blow a quick whistle to show they're governing the game. They will not let this game get out of hand. Uh, I would say Indiana would prefer it becomes a physical game because they have a longer bench. If there's a weakness on North Carolina, it might be their guards a little bit, plus their bench is short. You notice probably in a scouting report, Kitchell's been told to make Perkins put the ball on the floor. He's playing right up in his face, even 25, 28 feet from the basket. Randy Whitman committed the foul for Indiana, the second on the Hoosiers. Here's how they arrived in this championship game of 1981. 
North Carolina, relatively easy wins against Pittsburgh, Utah, Kansas State, and Virginia. Look at Indiana scores. They outscored in those four games the opposition by 100 total points, an average win of 25 points in the margin. I tell you, if they keep blowing a quick whistle, Al Indiana's going to be in trouble. They're putting so much pressure on the ball. I, I don't think so, Billy, because Indiana could go back to their 10th, 11th man, really. No, I'm talking about the starting club that they have out here. They're definitely going to be in some foul trouble with that much pressure on the ball. Because when he goes back to those four, six foot eight grunt players that he got, they're good players, but they picked out. So I think what happens with officials, they can't call the game one way. They exchange calling usually. Were they guilty of the travel to get the ball in Indiana's hands? Now North Carolina in their 1-3-1 one, one zone defense. They showed man-to-man -man just one time down the court. And a turnover. Black brings it down. Worthy. Inside to Perkins. The freshman rejects it. Goaltending as Landon Turner hit it on the way down. Here you're going to find the matchups. Ketchel on Perkins. Perkins awful tough to handle in there. And there's Turner coming from right under the basket. Obvious call. Four to nothing. North Carolina leads it. We've played two and a half minutes. Indiana looking for its first basket. Should be a technical foul. It is. Landon Turner. There may have been a foul on I, Carolina as well. I disagree with that call that time, Billy, because I think he grabbed the rim to protect himself. I think Worthy came over and caught his hip. Let's see if it's right. Here it makes goes. no difference. A man grabs the rim. It doesn't make any difference Watch. to protect himself or not. He got fouled, and there's the technical. So there should be a foul for Landon Turner. Two shots and a technical down the other end. It's Worthy. And that's the grabbing of the rim. Yeah, but I think what happens, Billy, in the spirit and the intent of the rules, <laughs> I think that a guy's afraid of getting spun out and getting hurt. Well, then they're going to have to change the rules. I wouldn't I wouldn't disagree with you. A man ought to be able to protect himself. But the rule is that if a man grabs the rim under any circumstances, it's a technical. I know better than to argue with you on the rules. Landon Turner, the junior from Indianapolis, has the first Indiana point. These are for the two foul shots as he was attempting to shoot when hammered. And now we'll go to the other end where Al Wood of North Carolina will shoot the one technical. You know, Dick, throughout this tournament, Landon Turner has showed me an awful lot of things you didn't know he possessed. He can guard the small forward, and there he put the ball on the floor in a good baseline drive. Al Wood was sensational on Saturday with a record 39 points, breaking Jerry West's old semifinal game record of 38. Carolina leads by three early going. And of course, as news develops, NBC will be switching from Philadelphia to New York and Washington to bring you up to date on any pertinent news break. So stay with us. You saw, even though that it was a sideline out of bound at half court, Carolina was all the way out at half court in case Indiana was going to pressure them out that far. Perkins, the call. that's Ketchell reaching in. And now you're right, that is a quick whistle. What they're doing, they're calling tickle fouls at this time. They know they must control this game. The guys are too big, the guys are too good. With this type of a team, the court should be made wider. Well, there's a case, too. As I said, they're overplaying the ball even 28 to 30 feet from the basket. So when you're going to stop the penetration that far out, you're bound to pick up some fouls. Perkins inside. And then back out to Black. Indiana uses strictly the man-to-man -man defense. Inside to Worthy. The big guy can't hit it. Oh, Wood on a nice offensive rebound. Al Wood couldn't tip it in. It's Indiana trailing 5-2. to two. And there was Landon Turner again. He's not to be denied off the boards. Dean Smith uses multiple defense. He's on man-to-man -man now. Isaiah Thomas against... Oh, rolling by Jimmy Black. Off to Wood. That's his shot. Doesn't get it. Perkins does. 7-2, to two, Carolina. You know, Dick, we expect this game to be a game of pace. Both of these teams, though, can play both the slow game and the fast, and there was Carolina taking advantage of a clear fast break opportunity. Yep. Indiana looking for its first field goal. Randy Whitman, not there. Perkins rebounds. We played nearly four minutes. Carolina leads 7-2. Al Wood! And Al Wood fouls as he tried to go for the rebound. If you notice, what, what Whitman's shot. Whitman is bending towards the basket, Billy, instead of jumping up straight. He's losing his momentum. Watch this little double pump by Al Wood. Isaiah Thomas, a great leaper. There was the double pump. Wood doesn't miss many of those, and he certainly didn't the other day. And there's, of course, the rebound foul. Great hustle back down court by Indiana. Look at that. There were four fellas back down on defense against the break. 
Carolina putting a trap on Whitman. That leaves Turner open. Kitchell open in the corner. Great. Talbert. Not there, and the foul's going to be on Kitchell, and that's his third foul. Oh, my. Again, in the championship game, the tendency at the beginning is excessive whistleblowing. Well, he probably came over the back, and both teams missed on opportunities for easy shots. Perkins going up. There's Kitchell coming over the back. Unworthy who had good position. Well, I think Indiana's making a mistake at the present time, and Bobby will fix it probably, is that when they come down, they're not analyzing the defense. Jimmy Black brings it in. He's just happy to be playing here tonight. He very nearly involved in a serious automobile accident at the start of the season. Double dribble by Worthy. No basket. Traveling is the call. Now, Indiana, red hot team in this tournament gone four and a half minutes without scoring on a field goal with two points on free throws. I think you see Bobby Knight make him throw some more passes here to get everybody in the movement. They've been kind of standing around a little bit. Thomas posting up. Whitman got there. Tolbert misses. And Wood rebounds. Carolina's got a man open. Perkins is fouled by Grisley, who just came in the game. Grisley replacing Kitchell, and he has his first foul. I still can't understand on fast breaks why they kick the ball into the big man. A big man can't handle the ball at that speed. You know, Al, I think you're right, but the case there was, you'll see Wood, he didn't want to pass it, but he thought that Sam, see, he was looking down the side to get it to yeah. Black, but he thought that Perkins had such a lead. And the line is Sam Perkins, sensational freshman from Latham, New York, near Albany. The Rookie of the Year in the Atlantic Coast Conference, averaging 15 points a game and eight rebounds. <laughs> Makes it eight to two, Carolina. There's five fouls on Indiana, and we haven't played five minutes yet. Background of 18,000 plus at the Spectrum. Rebound, Indiana's Tolbert. Isaiah Thomas has been posting Jimmy Black up. See if he stays back out of the point guard now. Man to man. Isaiah Thomas with the ball. Great honor to be an All-American and a consensus choice as a sophomore. Was a member of the U.S. Olympic team, as was Al Wood. Here's Thomas. Tip in by Risley. That's the first field goal. It comes five minutes and 15 seconds into the game. And Al, as you said, Bobby Knight's awful deep with those big run-type players off the bench. Playing hard man-to-man. -man. Nice play by Landon Turner to deflect that pass away. 50-year-old Dean Smith. He played on the Kansas team in 1952 and won the national championship. As did Bobby Knight play on a winning Ohio State team in 60. Many things have come. There are the season statistics. And obviously all very impressive for Carolina and Indiana. I'd like to ask you, gentlemen, especially you, uh, Al McGuire, the effect of the day's events on these two teams. Well, what happened is I think everyone's depressed. I know the coaching staff's on, the ball players, but once they come out in the court, they're going to play. But it's a good lesson to the young people. Sports are to be used and not to use you. The only truly important thing to win in life is surgery and war. And, Bill, I know you have your feelings. Well, I really think that it had to take away from the intensity that the kids would have during the day, but I talked to both uh, assistant coaches from both teams, and they felt that their players knew about the incident but not were not distracted to the point to take away their game. Eight to four, Carolina with the ball. Substitutes, yes. Dick. We've got two for Carolina. 34, Pete Butko is into the game. And also in for Carolina is the freshman, Doherty. Matt Doherty, 44. This is Perkins, so it's a very young team out there for Carolina. Black down the alley, off to Butko, into Perkins. Out to Black, he's open. Oh, what a pass to Butko. And the reserve misses everything. Six minutes gone. Indiana, despite the fact they've not been scoring, is only within two. Isaiah Thomas has his first hoop. Black's laying off him, Billy, but he's laying too far off. You can't give Isaiah that shot from the top of the key. 
I think the reason for the substitutes by Dean Smith that he realizes his starting front line cannot go up against Bobby Knight's front line for the full 40 minutes. And uh, Doherty and knocked away by the hustling Randy Whitman. You know, it's remarkable, Dick, where Indiana scored only one field goal there in the first six minutes and still right in the game. That's what defense is about. Defense is there every night. The offense, you don't know where it's going. That's why Bobby Knight insists on his kind of player and his system. Five seconds, no basket. A turnover to Indiana, and the Hoosiers have a chance to tie it up. You talk about overplay. Already in this ball game, in six minutes, Indiana has one five-second jump ball call and one five-second out-of-bounds situation. So while they play a strict man-to-man, -man, they also are smart enough to slough off and double-team the ball at times. That's bad that, that timing on the out-of-bounds play by North Carolina that time. Giving, giving Ray Tolbert the outside jumper. He ties it up. Ray Tolbert, the senior, has his first basket, and the game is even. Carolina has to show its poise now. Got to come back to the basket off Al Wood. Al Wood, he was fouled. Isaiah Thomas knocked it away. Wood was able to control. Boy, there's some quick hands in there. Trying to get the ball back to Al Wood. Worthy can't hit. Colbert for Indiana. The Hoosiers look for their first lead. Thomas. Doherty rebounds for Carolina. Indiana's pace now, Al. Quick move by Black. And a foul. No, baseline. The ball was on the baseline. And it goes to Indiana. In comes Pepper. Mike Pepper returns. And Matt Doherty goes out for North Carolina. Dean Smith and Bobby Knight still got a low profile in this game. They haven't turned up the flame in the kitchen yet. But in the wild, you see them both start the perk, start the boil. You just don't want to overboil this. Happened to you in 74. Oh, Dick. <laughs> Here we see Carolina back in the zone now. Eight, eight to score. Nearly eight minutes gone. Isaiah. Rebound Al Wood. One Olympian from the other. Inside, Perkins. Oh, a nice dish off, and Al Wood scores. And Al Wood, that is his 2,000th career point for Al Wood. That was absolutely beautiful. Now, anytime you play one of Bobby's teams, you've got to be looking to hit that open man because they're going to double team on that ball anytime they can. Landon Turner. Risley with a rebound. The basket is not allowed. No basket, the foul before the shot. Freshman Perkins is Bobby Knight in disbelief that he didn't get two on that last one. Well, Sam Perkins didn't realize how open he was. Landon Turner came to help out. You see how they pick up. You know, it's a man-to-man, -man, but on the weak side defense, they almost like zone principle. Well, he gets Landon off the ground there, and it's simple. He got good position, Al Wood, and anytime he's free and tight, obviously it's a deuce. Yeah, nice balance. Here's the jump trap by North Carolina. Carolina leading 10-8. 11 and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Against his zone, Randy Whitman got to start shooting. Well, they got Kitchell out of the game. He's the guy that normally be putting it up. Put it up, Randy. Oh, oh steal. Oh, Jimmy Black all the way. Hey, Isaiah really didn't bust to try to catch him that time, and Bobby is hot. Well, you know what? I don't think Isaiah could catch him. Probably the most underrated ball player on this court is Jimmy Black from Connell Hayes High School in the Bronx. He did a great job on Isaiah Thomas in the first meeting back in December on NBC. Carolina beat Indiana by nine points at Chapel Hill. They're giving Isaiah a lot of jump shot room. I think he's going to take some. Tolbert misses and Worthy rebounds. The sophomore to Wood. Black inside to Perkins, a great pass. And Carolina leads 14-8. I can't understand. Dean Smith puts me to sleep. But he did. He told me that Black wasn't that good earlier in the year. I didn't say wasn't that good. But he kind of underestimated him, in my opinion. My god, he's unbelievable. Isaiah Thomas can't connect. 
Great defense by the Tar Heels. Bobby Knight's going to have Isaiah up at the top of the key more before this game's over. Nice move. L1 scores, and Carolina leads by eight. What did that mean, Billy? Dean Smith with that gesture. I don't know. I didn't see the gesture. This game is so darn exciting sitting here watching it. I haven't been watching it, Coach. Colbert to Thomas. Isaiah. Rebound Perkins, and it's all Carolina at the moment with nine and a half minutes. He'll take it in. He'll take it in. Worthy. Rebound Turner, and the foul is on Doherty of North Carolina. Dean Smith's going to go. Now they're going to start working officials. Watch Bobby. He's going to retaliate on that one. They must there he get, comes. <laughs> Billy, they must get the ball into Whitman's hands now. Isaiah tried, a little bit cool. He'll sit out for a little while, come back and try again. But Whitman can shoot from the outside. They got to get the ball to him. That's a good call by the official. That Landon Turner, very underrated ball player. A timeout here in Philadelphia. Nine minutes, 25 seconds left in the first half. Carolina 16, Indiana 8. In the first game, Third place went to Virginia's Cavaliers as they beat LSU 78-74. It was uh, packed with excitement. It's interesting to note the crowd is definitely swung in favor of North Carolina. LSU has joined the Carolina fans and, of course, Virginia from the ACC. So it's the Hoosier fans basically alone, and their team is down by eight with 9.20 left in the first half. North Brad Carolina pick up full court, zone trap. Just try to change, change it after timeouts. Jimmy Braddock is in for North Carolina. It's a very short team on the court for the Tar Heels. Whitman can't hit. Rebound Turner for an easy two. Smart play by James Worthy, not the foul Turner with excellent inside position. Jimmy Thomas in the ball game now. He was sensational here on Saturday. Indeed he was, one of our co-MVPs, and we'll be picking the most valuable player in $1,000 from Chevrolet to that player's school later in the game. Thomas, Turner, and Indiana comes clawing back. It's 16 to 12, North Carolina, with eight and a half minutes remaining. Every time Dean Smith goes to the bench, Indiana pulls right back on him. It may be a decisive factor in this game. This is Jimmy Thomas, Hawking Pepper. I'm related to Isaiah Thomas. Perkins with Turner. We got to pretty much keep Jimmy Black in there. Doherty hits it alive with the rebound to Thomas. He's only 6'3", but a great leaper. He got nine rebounds in the semifinals. A block shot, four, two or three steals, no turnovers, sensational 17 minutes. Colbert to Turner, he has the hot hand. Not a good shot. Short on that one, and Worthy came up with it. This is Braddock. He's got the shot. Pepper, Mike Pepper, a senior from Vienna, Virginia, his first points. Carolina back on top by a half a dozen, seven and a half minutes remaining before the intermission. Carolina is going to be real tough when Pepper hits from the outside. Well, I think Dean Smith probably gave the biggest side release if he could in the game because Pepper has been off in his shooting. He needed that one to get off the snide. Jimmy Thomas is open, and he answers for Indiana, his first points. Surprisingly, Thomas is only playing 14 minutes a game, but he's fifth in rebound. Well, they are really forcing North Carolina to put the ball on the floor. Away from the ball, a foul on Doherty of North Carolina. That costs the Tar Heels possession. 50-year-old Dean Smith. Everywhere he's gone in this great game the last two decades, he's been stamped a winner. You can say the same thing about Indiana. Really excellent that the two coaches in this game have brought to college basketball. Dean Smith has just been made the president of the Coaches Association. He's at a banquet last night. And in that light, the coaches themselves named Ralph Miller and Jack Hartman, co-coaches of the year. Two great names in this coaching game, and our congratulations to them. Well, they're giving Jimmy Thomas the shot. He's going to put it up the next time he touches it, I believe. There he is, Jimmy Thomas. And a rebound. Carolina. Butko picked it off. Long pass. That pass. 
Did Tolbert touch it? Yes, it's North Carolina's ball. I would said I didn't touch it. I would say he didn't touch it. Well, if he did, he was up about 14 feet. Now, that's the kind of call Bobby Knight kind of likes because it gives him reason to start going after him. <laughs> There's Knight, who won his 300th game at the age of 38. He's 39 now in his 10th year in Indiana. Was coach at Army at 24. Played on the Ohio State Championship team in the 60s, early 60s. Al Wood, what a touch. Put that right up through. Thomas's nose, that jump shot. Tough well, to defend when a man does that on you. Well, he's so smooth. There you are. Andy Whitman. There you are. 20 to 16. Whitman has his first bucket. He's an unbelievable shooter. Obviously, the best shooter out there is Al Wood, but the second best, in my opinion, is Whitman. Jimmy Black working on Isaiah. Great pass to Doherty, and then Doherty with a shot, handcuffed Butko underneath. That's, again, great defensive play inside. Now watch Al Wood. He gets Jimmy Thomas in behind the pack. Now watch this. Puts it right up through his face. Excellent jumper. North Carolina overpassed that lap last time down the court, but you've got to give Indiana a lot of credit because they really pick up on the weak side. Less than six minutes remain in the first half. Indiana can cut the lead to two. Isaiah dumping off. Landon Turner is 20 to 18, North Carolina. Eight points for Turner. Made a mistake there, attacking that guard too high out of the front of the zone. They sent the two guards out the... Indiana just doesn't let you hit the forward. Jimmy Thomas almost had the steal. Now Wood doesn't hit the short jumper. Worthy gets it back. He can't hit. Rebound Thomas. He's 6-3 in the outleap Worthy. Boy, Ray Tolbert just changes the arc on the shot inside. Whitman ties it up for the Hoosiers. Talking about Jimmy Thomas from Florida, he has got more than six rebounds in over 10 games at Indiana this year. That's six unanswered points for the Hoosiers. Black inside to Worthy to Doherty. Black is open. Inside, Worthy. James Worthy makes it 22-20. He has four points. Black gets it to the man that's supposed to have the ball. It's beautiful to play with a guy like Jimmy Black. You know you're going to get the ball if you're open. North Carolina going almost straight zone here lately, and Whitman's taking advantage. Three in a row for Randy Whitman, and it's tied again at 22. Nobody in this world can let Randy Whitman shoot. I'm, I'm, sure, I'm, sure, I'm sure Dean Smith would like to go a little man-to-man, -man, but his guy's got to be wearing down a little bit. Al Wood inside to Worthy. Worthy over Tolbert. Hits again. Oh, what end-to-end -end play between Carolina from the Atlantic Coast and the Big Ten champion, Indiana. Here's a little bit of man-to-man. -man. I said they'd like to come out and take him out of that pattern. They've been in that zone. That's a trap out there, isn't it, Billy? Yep. More than a man-to-man. -man. Kicking to the ball out of bounds to Indiana. And we're going to have a timeout. Four minutes and two seconds remaining in this first half. North Carolina 24, Indiana 22. We return to our studio for these messages. today and we'll be awaiting Jessica Savage's report at halftime and don't forget fans at the end of this game will have a complete summary of the day's activities from NBC News. You didn't miss anything while you were away. You didn't have a foul just called on Doherty of North Carolina. Indiana playing it from the baseline with a chance to tie the game. It's 24-22 Tar Heels. All set Dean. On the whistle. 346 left in this first half. North Carolina has committed 16 fouls, Indiana five. Oh, that's a good move by Isaiah Thomas. Stepped right in between a double team. If somebody had been coming across the middle, Indiana had a three-on-one inside. 
Jimmy Thomas with the ball. He's just a sophomore. Parents went to Indiana. Isaiah and it's stolen by Pepper. Long pass. And Jimmy Thomas avoided a sure basket by Black by deflecting it away. It looked like a defensive halfback. Oh, Isaiah Thomas's hands incredible. Look at he stamped his feet down there. Leading scores thus far. Wood, Perkins have seven each. Worthy six for Carolina. Turner with eight. Whitman was six for Indiana. Dick, I think any great defensive club does not allow transition. Both of these teams get back. You just don't get easy baskets. You got to work for every one you put up there. North Carolina leading by two. By the walk. Wood inside to Worthy. Good fake. Misses the basket, but he was fouled by Landon Turner. Worthy has a nice head and shoulder fake. He's hesitant. What happens when he gets a rebound of a pass like that, he counts 1,001, and then he goes up. Watch. Here he comes, Billy. Watch. Very difficult. 1,001. Now go up. Hey, <laughs> surrounded by the world right there. Very difficult to get the lob against the Bobby Knight team because they play that great weak side defense. Worthy hits the first one. Carolina leads by three. Worthy missed half of last year, suffered a broken ankle against Maryland as a freshman. It's from Gastonia, North Carolina. Rebounded by Tolbert. It's 25-22. North Carolina leading exactly three minutes left. First half. Now they go man to man. Indiana has not led at any time. Perkins makes the interception. The plastic man. Those arms look 10 feet long at times. Inside and a whistle. Foul on 52. Worthy of North Carolina. That'll send Indiana to the other end. One and one. Second foul on Worthy. Well, he tried to establish position. If you're just not going to push Landon Turner's, Turner's around on the inside, nor are you going to push Ray Talbert. They don't give ground. Both teams in the bonus, and shooting for Bobby Knight's Hoosiers will be Ray Tolbert. What do you think would happen if Bobby Knight got off the bench and called you over saying, Isaiah, and you turned around and said no? <laughs> what do you think it happened? <laughs> would don't, that be tough? Don't nope. even present the idea. By the way, just to clear up some things, Al McGuire and I and uh, Bobby Knight were in a kidding, having a good time after the game on Saturday. And some reporters thought that we were arguing that you were going to fight each other. Totally ridiculous. We were having a good time, and Bobby Knight troubled with his sense of humor, as you put it, Al. What does he? What do you say he should do? When he says something funny, he doesn't smile. <laughs> you know, so you think he's serious. Black to Worthy. No whistle, and Indiana has the ball. Carolina fans are booing. I think that's overpassing by North Carolina. Dick, when you've got the good shot, you got to take it. That's another one on Worthy, it looks like. And a foul on Worthy will be his third, and he is an invaluable member of that front line for North Carolina. You see James Worthy coming down to court. That shouldn't have been a foul at all. As a matter of fact, he's setting a screen on him without giving him an opportunity to turn it all there. Just a solid screen from behind. Should have been a no-call situation. A ridiculous call by the official. You say a ridiculous call? That I think, yeah, I think it's absolutely ridiculous. Chris Brust, 6'8 and a half junior, has replaced Worthy as Thomas nails the first free throw, and Indiana trails by only two. You know, Dick, in a game like this where there are going to be so many tough calls to make, you don't make the cheap kind of call like that. There's some things like that, I believe, no harm, no foul. But it was a clever play by Isaiah. North Carolina has never relinquished the lead, but it's cut to one. These one of the valuable members on the sidelines worthy for North Carolina. 2-10 left first half. This is North Carolina's delay game, but they stay in a little offensive structure. Look at Talbert. He's letting Brust go because he wanted to help out on Wood. This is Brust with the ball, far side. It looks to me like they want to get the baseline man to high so they can take their defensive man to school. Here Perkins it goes. This open as uh, Turner gambled on the steal, but Carolina didn't take advantage of going inside. This is a delay game right here. Everybody talks about Carolina four corners. This is a new version of it. Delay game, looking for something absolutely super plus to eat up some time on the clock. Well, Creighton University has done this for the last 22 years. Deflected out of bounds by Indiana. Yeah, it was. Good call by the official. He's right there on it. Matter of fact, we copied this, this delay right here from Creighton ourselves about 10 years ago. 
Used to be funny to watch Al McGuire's team's practice, Dick. Every play they had had a team's name, like Wake Forest, Ohio State. Well, that was the people we copied it from, at <laughs> least because that's the only thing we might have been honest with. <laughs> I had great players. And great assistant coach. And super. And of course, enjoyed the championship in 1977 in your very last coaching game. And fortunately for us, joining us here on NBC. 25 24. Yeah, North Carolina's passing lanes are getting farther and farther apart. Time for one to be picked off if they're not careful. I think Carolina. There it is, the turnover. Just going to call it. You're right, but I was going to say, I think they're fooling too much. They're trying to do too many different things. Defensively is fine, but then you can't start alternating your offense. It's too confusing. Well, I think he's trying to gain some time with Worthy on the bench over there. He'd like to be able to go out on top, but he has got a very, very weak bench at North Carolina for the first time in my memory of his ball play. That's why he dissolved the blue team. In, Indiana was tied at halftime against LSU on Saturday and then blew out the Bengals 67-49. Thought they were three down, Nick. Jimmy Thomas, Thomas. Saves it. Isaiah, and Tolbert, and he is fouled by Jimmy Black. That Jimmy Thomas is incredible around the basket. You're right, uh, Billy, and double checking. LSU led Indiana by three, 30 27 at the half, and then Indiana had that 11 0 stretch and blew the game apart early in the second half. Great play by Jimmy Thomas to keep that thing alive. And Talbert, good call by the official. Jimmy Black upset with it, but it was an excellent call. And a chance for Indiana to be the leader in the game for the first time. 33 seconds left in the half if Talbert can make the two. Now, do you think Dean Smith will sit on it for 33 seconds? Yes. Uh, I think it'd be a smart thing. Either go in one down if he makes this or go in one up. I think you'll try, but I think Indiana will keep that defensive pressure on him to the point where it'd be very difficult to do so. Oh, good rebound by Perkins. Just when it appeared that Indiana was going to get a chance. Now, there was another call similar to what we had. No harm, no foul. I don't have been a call. That was a good play. I don't think so, Billy. They'll go for one shot, I believe, because they're in a one and one Indiana. Al Wood, and he's fouled by Isaiah. He knew it. I think that's First a bad foul. mistake. Very bad mistake. They knew they're in the one and one. So in this tie game, here's Wood and double teamed as Thomas off the backside to help out. Here you see Al Wood. Now Isaiah comes down over the top. His hands are so incredibly quick that most fellas that get that call to foul all the time for Isaiah is just occasion. At the line, Al Wood of North Carolina. He has seven points in the game. What a senior this has been. Now over 2,000 points in his marvelous career. From Gray, Georgia. And North this, Carolina leads by one. And if this game goes down to the wire and North Carolina has the ball, this is the gentleman who will take the shot, Al Wood. Guys are in that lane a little early, both teams. Culver gets the rebound, 13 seconds left. There's your official clock, Thomas with the ball. Isaiah's going to take Jimmy Black. He's got two fouls on him. Whitman at the buzzer. Indiana leads 27-26. So Bobby Knight's Hoosiers lead for the first time in the game, and it comes at the buzzer thanks to Randy Whitman. Shot at the buzzer, giving Indiana its first lead at 27 26. In case you're curious, four times in the preceding 42 championship games, there have been an overtime contest, but we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves. What do you think uh, Coach Dean Smith told his team at halftime? They settle down. I think they're panicking a little bit. What happens is that they have the best baseline in basketball. They have scored 22 points on their baseline with 14 rebounds, where the baseline of Indiana only has 11 points and 11 rebounds. There are the statistics, Billy Packer, of the first half, and it was a very even statistical half as well. Well, from a field goal shooting percentage, uh, Indiana down there at 37. Other than that, as you say, Dick, a very, very uh, even first half. And IU fans at the LSU game said, boy, we can't play any worse than that with a guy like Isaiah Thomas on the bench. Well, tonight so far, Isaiah is one for seven 
four assists and tur two turnovers. I would imagine Bobby Knight feels good about that, but I think the key is that North Carolina cannot afford foul trouble. Indiana can, and right now you've got a guy like James Worthy with three fouls on him. That really hurts North Carolina a lot more than Kitchell having three. Now, Dean Smith, will this be the year that he captures basketball's top award, a national championship, or will Bobby Knight, deja vu, return to Philadelphia and win it again? Five years ago, it was his Hoosiers completing a perfect season as he won for Indiana the third time. Indiana University has won the national title. Carolina won it once in 57 under Frank McGuire. Carolina will get the first chance of the second half. The starting lineups about the same as open the ball game. This is Al Wood, Perkins, Pepper, with Worthy in there with three fouls. And a steal, Isaiah Thomas against Black. Very, very important time in the game, fans. The first three minutes of the second half. Extremely important. And Indiana has been absolutely awesome during that period in the playoffs. Great feed and a goal by Perkins makes it 29-28. Nine points for the freshman Perkins. Well, Bobby Knight would go crazy in that. He never wants to see his weak side of his defense get taken advantage of like that. Randy Whitman under pressure. Jimmy Thomas opens the second half at guard. Isaiah dishing off to Turner. They can, Brandon Turner. They can forget that defense against Indiana because Isaiah goes right to the foul line. He's got a three-on-one situation when he gets it. That, that defense can be put in off ball. That was Turner's 10th point. He leads all scores. Worthy around Tauber. Got a high bounce, but no whistle. Perkins. Worthy. Black into Worthy. And it was uh, Thomas reaching in. A foul against Jimmy Thomas, not Isaiah, who came up with the ball. There's Isaiah coming down over the top so many times. There's Isaiah. Now, see, he's right inside the defense. Once he turns and wheels, he's got nothing but open daylight in there. You can't expect those two guys back there, particularly Worthy, running the, the baseline, to be in a position to stop that. on the whistle. You hear the comments of the players and the officials. Pepper with Carolina trailing by three. There's oh, Thomas there. again. Al Wood can't stop him, and Indiana has its biggest lead, 33-28. Indiana does not fast break. I say a Thomas fast break. <laughs> by Isaiah as he was really playing his man black very loosely. Inside, Worthy. Tipped by Wood, rebound Jimmy Thomas. Jimmy Thomas. Foul on Wood of Carolina. We're gonna see now, overpassing, you notice Randy Whitman's not even guarding Pepper. Now here goes Thomas, he's off to the races. What's happening to North Carolina is that Pepper is not being played by Whitman, and he won't get to the defense. Therefore, there's no passing lane. They've also sloughed off that weak side, Billy. LSU failed to score the first five minutes of the second half on Saturday. Lost their three-point halftime lead. Indiana blew them out. They're trying to do the same to Carolina. We're in a two-three zone, North Carolina. Watch Whitman to take the shot. One, three, and one kind of matchup. Now they just go ahead and slide, depending on how many men are out front playing against them. There's Whitman. Isaiah. Whitman, not there. Rebound, Worthy. Two Carolina men acting. Went down on the contact of Isaiah, but no whistle. Inside, and a foul on Turner of Indiana. Reaching over the back. Two fouls now on Turner. Anytime Turner gets on Perkins' hip, he has some trouble, doesn't he? I was with Sam Perkins yesterday, and he doesn't like to be called the Plastic Man. So I said, well, that's what Billy calls you. Well, I gave him that name based on a cartoon character in Saturday mornings. I've never seen a guy with longer arms than Sam Perkins has, and he used them to such great advantage. Well, I told him you did it, and for him to punch you in the head. <laughs> Ooh, there's that great defense. Tolbert forced the Aaron pass. No question about the defense. They just will not allow you to rotate the ball, overplay, and all the time. Well, how do you 
counter that than Al McGuire. When they're overplaying the ball like that, what do you do? You go back door on the weak side. Bobby Knight will not let you reverse the ball. Randy Whitman, and now Indiana leads by seven. Against the zone, I was surprised the shot before that that Randy missed. He's a zone breaker. Almost stolen again. Black alone. And Jimmy Black, that was a big hoop. 35-30, Black with four. Dean Smith should call a timeout, but he wants to wait for the commercial timeout that usually comes in about 16 minutes. Whitman to Turner. That was the trap again. You see Isaiah Thomas always goes to the center when he sees a trap coming. Whitman's such a clever ball player that he can get the ball to him. There's Isaiah. 37-30, Isaiah with Tim. Isaiah, the youngest of nine children out of Chi-Town. And a little child shall lead you is the cry of Indiana fans and how they love Isaiah. Into the promised land. Perkins got away with a little push to Wood. Boy, Carolina having a devil of a time getting the ball in. Blocked by Tolbert. Dean will go with that timeout the next time they get the ball, Al. He cannot afford to wait. I think he's waiting for the commercial timeout. I don't think he can afford either, Billy, but he, he knows that the next dead ball will probably go commercial. Inside is Thomas. All alone. Oh, no, he's going to call it. Good call, though. The cream and crimson roll. led by Isaiah Thomas in this second half. There he is, he recognizes that defense. Although he's a guard, he's got such great ability to go inside. Here he is taking the jumper from the outside. He was one for seven in the first half. You know a great player like that's not gonna be down all day. Indiana again outscoring the opponent in the early moments of the second half. In fact, since Carolina led 25-22 at the end of the first half, the Hoosiers have outscored them 17-5. Another big run for Indiana. Now you must get the ball, obviously, into Al Wood's hands. He's the guy that got you to the dance. He's got Jimmy Thomas on him, and Thomas really matches up well. I think we'll see Perkins trying to handle it some. Inside is Wood. Goaltending on Tolbert of Indiana. Nice call, Al. For change. 39-32, Indiana's lead down to seven. 15 minutes, 15 seconds left in this game. And that's, here we see the play inside. Jimmy Thomas posted up low by Wood. There's the goaltend. Very close call, by the way. Isaiah Block. Oh. And he gets it back. What an athlete. They get a shot rejected like that, and they'll scamper after it. And he smiles a little bit, said, nice play, Worthy. Well, Dean Smith says that, say, uh, that Al Worthy could be the best, or James Worthy could be the best he's ever had. Randy Whitman. Back to the 1-3-1 zone. They want to get a little more solid. Now they'll pick them off from the outside here, around the perimeter. Inside to Turner. Nice oh. touch. Great shot. A jump hook gets Turner 12 points, and Indiana by nine again. Boy, this has been a textbook five minutes for Indiana. Black connects for Carolina. He's got six. Bobby Knight wanted that defensive possession right there. He really wanted that one. Felt he could move it on up there to double figures. Only token pressure up court. Every time North Carolina spreads out their defense, Thomas takes advantage of it. See if he does again. Randy Whitman. Inside and then to Whitman. Long. Comes out to Tolbert. Good anticipation by Tolbert. Yeah, he saw that shot was going to be long and strong and got position to pick it off. Basketball at its best. Isaiah's giving those PT boat moves down there, going around his battleships. He's going to take that jump. They don't watch him. He steals the room. Here he comes out the other side. Take it around the horn again. Here's Here Isaiah. There you go. 43-34. Thomas with 14. 
it's time to put a box or a diamond one on Isaiah, get him out of the game. Hell, I think what's happening in North Carolina, anytime they go out of anything but the 1-3-1, one, one, great defense. Almost a five-second call. The five-second is still on when you pass that ball, so that might have been five. Worthy into the lane, can't hit it. Whitman gets it for Indiana. Leading by nine, 12.45 left in the game. Back to man-to-man, -to -man. Isaiah just posts Jimmy Black down inside. Boy, it's a jump switch there. Whitman, Indiana can do a little wrong. Their biggest lead, 45-34 at 12-20. Big call. Jimmy Black's down. Boy, I like Jimmy Black. What a ball play. I'd like to go back. Jimmy Black to number 21 as we watch him again. See, we talk about weak side defense. See that? It's almost like a zone. You're driving right into four defensive players right there. No room to go. Big... Here's that. Go ahead, Al. It's a hook from yesteryear. The Lone Ranger, the Green Hornet. Last time I seen that shot was by George Mikan in 1941. And here's Isaiah Thomas. He's as modern as 81. Al was going to say the last time he saw that shot. Oh, I mean, oh. You weren't going to say the last time you seen that Billy, shot. Billy, I never use a word that a shoeshine boy can't understand. 45-34, <laughs> Carolina trailing by 11. This is the collegiate championship. They write too many memos. Black loses the ball, and Isaiah Thomas comes up with it. Charge against Black of North Carolina. Yeah, I think he obviously stepped in that time. Yeah, we'll see if he had position. Third foul on Jimmy Black. Here we go. Isaiah can take the ball to hoop as well as any guard has played in a long time. Might have slid underneath him. The toughest call in basketball. There was the play. Little concentration. And it's being taken away by the great Indiana defense. Boy, I'll tell you, Al, I don't know about that call. I'm going to let the jury stay out. Indiana has the ball with an 11-point lead. There's the foul situation. No one with four. Kitchell has not played since committing three fouls early in the game. But Jimmy Thomas replacing him has been outstanding again. That's Thomas extricating himself from the trap. Indiana is so well drilled against the trap. They're perfectly prepared for this game. You trap them, Isaiah just takes advantage of it. Isaiah pops out, he'll give the ball off, pop into the foul line, the top of the foul line. Jimmy Thomas, a nice match for him back there, too. He's so relaxed, handles the ball well, and very sure of himself. Bobby Knight, no rush, wants to take a high percentage shot. Look for Whitman to take it. Since the final two minutes of the first half, Indiana outscoring North Carolina 23-9. Whitman, good block. block by Perkins. This is Wood to Dort, and he can't handle the pass. This is what happened to LSU on Saturday. Two on one. Nice play, Isaiah. Black, good position, and Thomas mad at himself for missing it. Yeah, yeah, but if you would have passed it off to Whitman, it would have been stolen. Perkins. Not a good shot. And you notice that Indiana now has the pace going. North Carolina no longer getting two, three, four passes in their offense. What has to happen, obviously, you got to give the ball to Al Wood. He scored 39 points in the semifinal. You know, you think they're trying to get it all back on a big play, Al. they got to get back into their game right now. Indiana's totally playing their game. Here's Thomas against Black. Short again, and Doherty rebounds for North Carolina. The Tar Heels are hungry for a basket. They trail by 11. Now 10 minutes, 20 seconds left in this second half. Perkins got caught against the backboard, and it's out of bounds to Indiana. You see, they're trying to get one pass and put the ball up. The desperation-type offense. That get that got LSU in trouble, and it's definitely getting North Carolina in trouble, and Dean Smith won another lecture timeout. Yeah, but these timeouts, he's trying to save them too long. It's getting too late, Billy. A reminder, NBC News will have a special report following our coverage of this 1981 championship. That will follow the final buzzer. Ten minutes, 18 seconds left. Indiana in command. We return to our studio for these messages. 
Dick Hamburg, Al McGuire, and Billy Packer at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. Young and old, they're here to cheer for their favorites. Indiana for the Big Ten and North Carolina from the Atlantic Coast Conference. Our thanks to the men behind the scenes calling the shots. Director Harry Coyle, George Finkel, who has been the coordinating producer for basketball throughout this year. And our executive sports producer, Don Olmeyer. 45-34, Indiana leading North Carolina with 10 minutes and 18 seconds left. And Dick, you know what's kind of exciting about watching this game? It's not only been an outstanding game, but you look out on the floor and eight of the eight players out of the 10 will be back again next year for both of these clubs. And the senior, Tolbert for Indiana and Wood for North Carolina. Of course, Pepper just came in in the substitution period. And here's Thomas again. He'll take it in and loses it. Kicked, however, by North Carolina and another. The little things are all adding up, and they seem to consistently be going to Indiana. I believe that Isaiah Thomas makes all pressure obsolete. He just goes right through. Did you ever have a ball hander any better? I had a guy named Dean the Dream Memager that could do it. With my help. Here's Isaiah <laughs> down on that baseline. The midpoint of the second half, 10 minutes left. Also, Butch Lee. See how patient they are. They use the clock for both of these teams. Well drilled. Good steal. Beautiful steal. Isaiah Thomas was trying to post up Black, and it goes into Wood, and he is fouled by Jimmy Thomas of Indiana, number 20. I would, the next number of times down court, constantly give the ball to Al Wood. Here we see Isaiah Thomas. Now watch him down there. Jimmy Black made a great steal here, and one of the reasons he was able to make it, that pass came from so far away from the low post man. Here's Wood. Now watch Thomas. Well, he was right up there with him. I think that's a good block. Al Wood brings North Carolina within 10, looking now for his 12th point. Forty-five, thirty-six, Indiana. North Carolina picking their defense up full court now. In essence, Indiana has three guards in the game: the two Thomases and Whitman. So they have a good ball handling core. Indiana has broke this defense. Foul on Worthy, his fourth foul, and Dean Smith can't believe it. Of course, another thing, too, Dick, with North Carolina going out full court pressure, they don't substitute much. It can become very, very tiring against a club that's well drilled that's going to move you around. Worthy will stay in the game despite the four fouls. When you're down by nine, you need him for his rebounding power. Especially when there's nine minutes and 14 seconds left. Colbert's got the baseline. Thomas, oh, what a move to get the ball back outside. This is their best defense right here under this situation. Indiana to play, I mean, North Carolina to play hard man to man. Try to get a five count. Now in Indiana, you're both using the clock and looking for the good play, and all the pressure is on the defense to just keep up with your man. 8.45 left. Indiana leads by nine. Bobby Knight's eyes are just going back and forth, flickering, watching this thing like a guy watching a miniature tennis match. It's amazing to watch him on that bench. Also, Billy, in the back of his head, he's trying to push that clock, get that clock to move. Landon Turner. And look who gets the rebound. And Thomas and finally had it taken away by Doherty. And Dean Smith leading the cheers down his way, asking his team to come forward. Eight minutes and 10 seconds left. Carolina needs a basket to get within seven. Boy, don't pick up your dribble. There's plenty of time left. Get it to Al Wood. Landon Turner got hit right Al in the face. Wood tipped it in as Perkins missed. It's 45-38. Landon Turner really took a shot in the nose there. 14 points for Wood. No. Caroline has to go back to the hard man to man. Can't give any Mickey Mouse defenses here. That's better. Now they got it set right. 
Bobby Knight, as cool and calm as you'll ever see him. And wide open is Randy Whitman. They can't gamble, Billy. Bobby has them. Their defense is broke. That's right. He's got that half-court trap. Just put the bet. He got to put the bet early, and uh, they've taken advantage of it every time they've gone in. Turner, and he's got his hand caught in the jar. Second, third foul now. On no Landon gamble. Turner. See Dean Smith. No gamble. Here's the pass inside. Now Isaiah was going to go up here. He realized Perkins on him. Watch him make a play out of this. Pass it back outside to Ray Tolbert. Just like nothing happened. Not don't many worry, men don't. can do that. And had there not been the defense, he was ready to spin it off the glass. The 360 back outside. Well, Indiana came in late December when they made Thomas captain. They gave him more freedom. And Bobby Knight says because of Thomas yelling at the ball players that he's more aware of himself and has made less turnovers since he became captain. So they, they haven't substituted a man here in the second half. Indiana, Ooh. Jimmy Black with a drive, rebound Whitman. Indiana had it. The second worst preseason in Knights' 10 years. They were 7-5 and five against quality opponents, we might add. If they were to win this game, Al, they break your record. Yep. With more losses than anyone else in the history of the NCAA. Tolbert dragged his foot, apparently, in the backcourt. Now, violation midcourt, and it'll be North Carolina the other way. Let's see it. Here we see it right here. This is going to be some great camera work to catch this one. Yep. That size 13 hit the line. <laughs> Six minutes, 49 seconds left. Dean is telling his ball players to be patient. Here you are, Mr. Coyle, excellent. Nice play inside. Holding is the call against Indiana. You know, there's been a very select few coaches who have won the tournament at all. Only 26 coaches have had the honor of winning a championship, and only five of those able to win back-to-back -back championships, Wooden, Iba, Rupp, Wolpert, Ready? and Jucker. And just a handful that have won as many as two, and Bobby Knight trying to do it this evening. And there again, this handle, Worthy, Tough shot. They're trying to get the ball one dribble too far. He had the jump shot. Didn't take it. A lot of time left, over six minutes. But Indiana with the ball and a nine-point advantage. Thomas inside. Yes, sir. Sixteen for Isaiah. Again. Absolutely great defense by Ray Tolbert on a step out. There's Al Wood, Jimmy Thomas, boxing him all over the place, keeping him off the boards. Look at his leaping ability. Timeout called by Dean Smith of North Carolina. And more and more, you see the red of Indiana. They lead by 11. 49-38, Indiana leading North Carolina. The Hoosier defense forcing 10 more turnovers. Six minutes left. And it's Indiana's ball. Get the ball to Isaiah Thomas. Bobby got this thing broke. You got to go back to man to man, like I said earlier. Now attack. Stay man to man. Don't gamble, North Carolina. No, there's that gamble. Jimmy Black's exhausted. That's why you've got Pepper in there. Isaiah went down nice. hard. Nice. Worthy with a steal. Look at the 6'9 man. Bring it up to Wood. What a pass. Oh, foul on Turner. He got the ball, but he got more than that. Yep. I'd like for you to watch how everybody gets back down court in this particular play. There's Landon Turner. Good move by Al Wood on the reverse right here. Jimmy Thomas cut off the baseline. Turner just came down too hard. And that is the fifth foul on Landon Turner. He leaves with 12 points. He's been an outstanding performer. Well, in this particular situation, Dick, that's not too bad because Grizzly coming into the ball game is probably just as good, if not better, a ball handler. And with the clock being a big opponent now, it might help Indiana's team. And Turner, a junior, will be back for IU again next year. Wood gets a soft bounce. 
He now has 15 to lead Carolina. Grizzly likes a rugged style. As he said, he makes few mistakes in the spread out offense. He's excellent. 49-39, Indiana leads North Carolina with five and a half minutes remaining. by the Indiana Hoosiers. Well, nobody came back to help, Dick. Well, he should have taken the jump ball then. Jimmy Thomas was open under the basket. Braddock off the bench and a foul. Worthy, and that's all for him. James Worthy leaves the game with seven points. You're going to get back in the ball game, Tar Heels. You've got to let Al Wood take the shots at this particular time. Look at Wood calling everybody together. Here we see the jumper not there. Invariably, you get yourself boxed out and try to come over the back against a top rebounder. You're in trouble. James Worthy, a great basketball player, be back again next year. See him pushing, knock Tolbert underneath. Tolbert just too strong, that upper body strength, good leap in the building. One of the interesting things with Bobby Knight is that in the last 10 years, in the last 10 games of the season, that's 100 games in the Big Ten, he's won 81 and lost 19. He builds his team up to a peak, and at the end, when it's time for the tough to get going, he gets moving. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Isaiah Thomas getting the ball up court for Indiana. The Hoosiers of the Big Ten leading North Carolina with five minutes remaining in the game. 49-39 for the 1981 College Basketball Championship. The Kenberg, Al McGuire, Billy Packer, the Spectrum in Philadelphia, over 18,000. The game played in the first half in North Carolina's hands. Indiana made the final shot of the first half to take a one-point lead and have been sparkling in this second half. Foul on Black reaching around. That's his fourth. Both teams just great in their coaching and their styles and their effort. Dean Smith, his sixth time in the Final Four. This is his third championship game. He was beaten by John Wooden. UCLA in 1968. He was defeated by Al McGuire in McGuire's last coaching game at Marquette in 1977. I think uh, Bo Ellis had a lot to do with that. <laughs> well, it becomes very annoying, and I'm sure to him more than anybody else when people come back and think, yeah, but he's never won the big one. Hey, what a ridiculous statement that is. How many big ones do you have to win to get here? There's a lot of time left. Reminder. Oh, you're our timekeeper again tonight. All right, there's a lot of time left. NBC News Special will follow our telecast from Philadelphia. Indiana is buying the clock. That was such a smart pass that time by Whitman. Rather than give the defense a chance to reorganize, he fires it over and attacks. Coming all the way back out again. It looks to me like Indiana has just about made a commitment towards the clock, but there's too much time left to do that. They must go for the chippy basket. I think they'll still go. They're looking for an absolute. There it is. Oh, Jimmy Thomas got caught. And there's Isaiah Thomas. He just suspends himself again. 12 points. The lead for Indiana. Here's Al Wood. Oh, nice move by Wood. Back to back. Were those two great plays individually? Oh, Bobby Knight really irate over that. He's saying, how could you let a man take the baseline? Back at the Spectrum in Philadelphia, where Indiana with less than three minutes and 15 seconds left, enjoying a 10-point lead for the national championship. Stolen by Pepper. The way. There's Al, your man, Al. Al Wood, but he's way short, and Risley rebounds, and he is fouled by Doherty of North Carolina. I, I really what? thought that Al might have got hit that time. 
You think that fella is an intense, he's got a 10 point lead, 255 to go, and any sin is a mortal one as far as he's concerned. Well, well he says he coaches against the game, he constantly is the chess player, and even the violation when you're hit by 25 is still just as important. Your opponent is yourself, your potential. That was a foul on Pepper trying to keep the ball away from Isaiah Thomas. So with 2.55 left, it does not look good for the Carolina Blues. And Al, again, it was that three minutes to start of the second half where Indiana been devastating throughout this tournament. Someday, I, I, I believe that teams should warm up at halftime because they're sitting down for 20 minutes in the locker room. They lost their sweat. What we did for 10 years, we attacked the first three minutes because defense starts now. Offense takes about 30 seconds to get going. And maybe two or three times a year, you win the game in the first three minutes of the second half. Isaiah Thomas now looking for his 20th point. Dick, that was really interesting. Randy Whitman and Bobby Knight were having a great conversation, which we caught part of on the sideline. Back and forth, back and forth, and finally Bobby said, call a timeout, let's get it straight now. And Bobby Knight has elected to call timeout. 2.55 left. Indiana at the free throw line. Isaiah Thomas and an 11 point lead. North Carolina has but one timeout remaining. Bobby Knight has four. Bobby Knight, one of the things a lot of people, especially in the press, don't understand Bobby, and he's made some enemies. But he certainly has not made enemies in the old core of college coaches. He respects the men who have pioneered the way for him. Uh, Nat Holman, Sinclair Bees, and Pete Newell. And he'll constantly involve them in his own coaching operation. They love Bobby Knight. He has copied from them the one thing that he does so well execution Isaiah Thomas makes it a 12-point lead for Indiana and in that spirit I want to thank our old friend Kurt Gowdy who helped pioneer it for us and he's now involved in the Basketball Hall of Fame at Springfield Massachusetts we understand a five million dollar new building Pepper can't make it Doherty Thomas got a piece of it and it's rebounded by Whitman and he is fouled by Al Wood feet again in the Indiana section. You know, Dick, one of the things about both of these coaches, too, we'll see that play. Jim Thomas just all over defensively. Randy Whitman, who plays some at forward, gets fouled by Al Wood. No question about the call. But you know something else that both of these coaches have in common, talking about going back to the old masters, is the fact that their former players always seem to come back and surround them off-season anywhere else they go. And I think maybe that more than wins is the mark of great coach. You know, a guy that, after the guys have left him, his players, they always come back to help him. This Randy Whitman has finally learned this year that he's not the playmaking guard anymore that he was a freshman year. And he's becoming the off guard, drives to the basket, puts the ball up. so quick if you didn't hear the foul you wouldn't have seen it that's right and it, the ref never did hear it i mean see it he said well i heard it it had to be one you're right it's like a foul tip Dick. quick on quick on quick but well, we are going to be back again next year and we're going to have the best college basketball package ever for you on saturdays and sundays on nbc and our thanks tonight for the cooperation from the ncaa walter byers tom turnstad dave cahill and all the fellows that have put together another great tournament wayne duke who is the Chairman of the committee. Or oh, Whitman's been grabbing everything off the boards now. A rare turnover. Carolina trailing by 14 points, however. Pepper, and he can't come close. Jimmy, Jimmy, Thomas. Jimmy Thomas again is defense. Bobby Knight grimacing more now with a big lead than he did when the game was very close and he was behind in the first half. You know, Dick, only a coach knows what can happen. Over the years, you have blown games with leads and you had to, you had to win in the safe and all of a sudden some safe cracker comes and gets away from you. And you, you worry. Dean, Dean's trying to slow the clock down. Bobby's trying to goose it. Get it going. You know, I think, too, you see him calling over at Jimmy Thomas. You know when I'd be worried if I was playing for Bobby Knight when he wasn't hollering at me? There's Dean, bridesmaid, third time in a row. Great coach, tough. brought the goal back to the United States. 
and it's, it's sad that everyone that seems to dig him says, well, he hasn't won the big game. He won everything in basketball. He's a credit to basketball, and I call him a good friend. Oh, Indiana suddenly showing uh, a lack of composure, and they've turned it over back to back. 207 left, and it's 55-43 Hoosiers. You know, Al, uh, most coaches like to save those timeouts, Dean Smith being one of them. You'll never find him in a ball game where he's in this situation timeout-wise, but he just had to call him to stop at the end of his momentum any way he could. He had no choice. He had to call him. That's their last timeout. Right. That's all she wrote. 55-45, exactly at the two-minute mark. The only way now you pick up a timeout is by faking an injury. Years ago, I used to fake losing a contact lens, and the kid never had contact lenses. All right, what can... Let's pretend we didn't hear that. <laughs> well, Al, you've got a good reputation. What can Dean Smith possibly work in that, that huddle now, other than just hoping that Indiana makes a lot of mistakes? What I think Dean Smith's doing is saying, hey, keep your, keep your heads up. Let's give it that, that 110%. Let's play hard man-to-man. -man. we got to gamble. We're looking for a couple of turnovers. But if we happen to go down, let's go down like champions. You know, you're in a tough situation right there. Down 10 with two minutes to go. You don't want to just go out and automatically start chopping. If you do, you turn the game into a kind of a farce. And they played hard. They played well. It's just Indiana's defense has been so devastating in the second half. Two minutes remaining. Will it be Indiana for the fourth time to wear the national championship? They won under an old friend of mine, Branch McCracken, in 1940 and 1953. And this man, Robert Montgomery Knight, what an incredible record, whether you like him or not. He's only 39 years old. He's already won more games. He won 200 at a younger age than anyone. He's won 300 at the age of 38, younger than any man in the history. He's won the Big Ten Championship six times in his 10 years and about to win his second national title. You said that one of his teams, one of the best uh, you ever saw, Al McGuire. It was the third best team, I thought, in the modern day history from 1950 on. The other two, I think the number one best team in the NCAA was UCLA in Kareem Abdul's junior year. And the second best team, I thought, was with Bill Russell in his senior year at San Francisco in the mid-50s. So San Francisco Dons had the all-time record, 60 in a row before UCLA broke it at 88. Indiana unbeaten, 32-0, won the championship in 76. Well, there's another chance for Carolina. 156 left. Al Wood, Jimmy Thomas guarding. Black. Pepper. And now there's no more timeouts. Here's where Dean Smith, Smith normally would have four timeouts. Almost another turnover as the hustle of Black came up with the ball, but he found himself in a position where he couldn't get it to a teammate. And he has to use substitutions to stop the clock now. Good play, Dean. You almost missed that one. You put a sub in, it stops the clock. Braddock Excellent. comes in. We're having a coaching clinic here. Perkins with a steal. If they score here, Indiana should call it. Oh, oh, what a play by Ray Tolbert. Smart play by Isaiah. He wants to use the clock, not the points. No shot under any condition. No wow. shots. Perkins, and it's a two-shot foul as Sam Perkins, trying to stop the clock, commits his first foul. Well, Carolina had a chance had Don Tolbert made that play to pull within six. There's Bobby, the great warrior over there. He got the suit on his face. He's like an old war horse. He smells the smoke and hears the bugles. Meanwhile, well, Dean Smith, who has orchestrated another great year. Just running out of time, she says. He wants to smile. You know, that that's the one thing I kind of feel sorry for him about. You know, he wants to smile. He will I, later. Well, some people smile inside. Well, that's true. Steve Risley hits the free throws, and Indiana back by 10. Al Wood. Oh, you don't want to foul there. Isaiah Thomas reaching in from the backside. And it's his fourth. If you're Indiana, you do not want to commit any fouls at this point because you not only have them put them on the line, you stop that clock. And, and you give them a chance for not a three-point play, but even a four-point play. 
Watch Al Wood for this reverse dribble. What a player. Excellent. He makes the reverse dribble. The, the pivot that you make is you want to step that foot back towards the basket, which gets you inside the defender. He'll definitely go, in my opinion, in the top three or four in the NBA draft in May or June. Fifty-seven forty-eight, Indiana. One minute and seventeen seconds left. We're on the odd number now. What you what you thinking here? What Bobby's thinking right now? There's a nine-point spread. What happens is North Carolina needs the ball five times to win. If they scored five times and Indiana didn't score, they win by a point. So you break the five times into one minute and 13 seconds, which is 70 seconds. Then put, I'm a kid, this way I used to do it. Okay, come you on, put I'm the five into the 70, so all you got to do is keep the ball 14 seconds every possession, and the 1981 NCAA championship is yours. Boy, I didn't know it was that complicated. complicated. No wonder you guys are paid so well. Well, it wasn't that complicated. <laughs> You're just trying to make it that way. No, no, As you no. get older, you forget how simple you had it. No, no, no. 59-48. Isaiah Thomas makes it look simple. He has 22. That's a smart pass by Doherty to get it all the way down court without using the time. No fouls. Pepper. Oh, God! That was Perkins over the back. Most valuable player award. We've broken tradition a few times. I'm going to suggest, since this game so many ways represents the leadership, that we give the most valuable player to the coach himself. Tonight, that's just a suggestion that Bobby Knight be the MVP. Of course, Thomas could do it. Well, uh, I go along with you. It's up to Billy. I I'm not believing you said that. Excuse me? I'm not believing you said it's up to me. Yeah, good foul. All right. I, uh, I'll tell you what. It was a coach's game when we started this show. He's won it. Uh, proven again what an outstanding coach he is. Not to take anything away from Dean Smith. I go along with your vote, Dick. $1,000 to Indiana University in the name of Bobby Knight, the most valuable performer this evening. Isaiah Thomas, he can ride on. Robert Montgomery Knight shirt tails with his performance. Listen to those Indiana fans as they count it down. <laughs> Most losses the team ever had, nine losses to win the NCAA. You know, I'd like to say something, I might be talking out of place, but in my, whatever my performance is this evening, I feel very deeply that the president is shot and that I hope that it comes out all right. And the way I perform, like crack sidewalks, $2 better type of thing, um, this is my job. I, uh, I would have preferred not to be on this evening. I think we all agree that we had hoped that the game might be postponed for 24 hours. That was not the case. And I hope that you fans have enjoyed the game and understand there are much more meaningful things happening in this country of ours. And we all send our very best thoughts toward Washington. Al Wood. And a foul. That's good to North Carolina. Excellent blocking out by Indiana. They're really packing that defense down there, not committing any outside perimeter fouls, but really going on the board's tough. You know, in the jargon of the thoroughbred racing fan for the favorite, much the best. You see the handicapper say, much the best. And does that apply to Indiana in this tournament? They beat Maryland by 35 points, Alabama, Birmingham by 15, St. Joseph's by 32, took care of LSU by 18, and they lead by 14 tonight in the championship game. Much the best. This is the place, city of brotherly love. Bobby just did it back to back. And I got a sneaky feeling that Bobby's starting to crack a little smile over there. 63-48 as Grizzly makes one out of two. Dean Smith, Eric Kenny in the game. He misses the shot. Isaiah Thomas the other way. 27 seconds. 23. 
Isaiah loses the ball. It's Wood the other way with 15. Braddock, Kenny, Wood, Perkins. That gets Carolina to 50 points. A cosmetic score, 63 to 50. Isaiah Thomas, when it comes down, Indiana will be champion. Philadelphia tonight and Bobby Knight joins a select group of only six other coaches in college basketball history to win this championship more than once. Congratulations to Indiana. Congratulations to Bobby Knight. The Hoosiers are 1981 champions. Second place to Carolina. And here's the winning coach with Billy Packer. Bob, a tremendous ball game by your team. It's just been devastating, particularly the second half defense. It's amazing performance. Well, Billy, we were really shaky getting the game started, and it was a little bit like our Maryland game. We got down uh, six or eight to nothing in a Maryland game, and we didn't take a timeout, and I was thinking about that at the beginning of the ball game. I didn't want to take a timeout uh, to start with, and then we got back in the game, and then Carolina pulled away at 16 to eight, and I really thought, that that was the crucial point in the whole game for us. I thought that when we moved back into a tie game and Whitman hit the shot at the end of the half, that we were in good shape when we went off the floor. I think Carolina had a chance to take us out of the game in the first half, but our kids did a heck of a job hanging in there and just didn't let them do it. Hey, we want to apologize, Al and myself, to you the other day when we put you on and we've been kidding around with you, and it came on some fans, and you catch so much crap from people around the country. Some fans thought you were arguing with us, and we, uh, really, we apologize for it and coming back that way. Don't worry about that. I've gotten along well with you guys for a long time. Now, another thing I want to say, you had. Kitchell getting in foul trouble right away, but Jimmy Thomas, the guy who has been sensational in this playoff, came in and did it all. Jimmy Thomas did a great job for us, Billy, all the way through the tournament, but this was a game where, where our whole team just played really well. They, they've hung in there since the uh, first of December when things weren't going real well for us, and they've never felt that we couldn't get here all year long. I told them before uh, the game tonight, I said, you guys, I've seen where you've said, and I've heard where you've said that, that we can go all the way, even when we were seven and five, we just got to get better. And they did a great job getting better. They have a great teacher, Bobby. Congratulations, we want to get some of your players in. Go ahead and revel in what okay. has to be a super win. Billy, player. thank you very number, much. John Wooden said number two is tougher than number one. Dick, back to you. I have to share a moment with our audience. Before Billy talked with Bobby Knight, Bobby Knight came over and shook hands with Al McGuire, and he had a welling of tears in his eyes. And as he was talking with Billy, we said he didn't smile much, but was there ever a lot of emotion trying to get out? I thought at times that wasn't just hoarseness. I thought Bobby Knight in victory was ready to cry. He's a very, very tough competitor. There's an awful lot of pressure here. I feel with mixed emotions, obviously, because of Dean Smith and the, so many times you get here and you always stub your toe. But uh, Bobby Knight's a coach's coach. I don't care what anyone thinks about him. Nobody in this country or in this world can ever knock his basketball coaching. Well, color the championship cream and crimson, Brian Gumbel. Hey, Dick Enberg, thank you very much. Maybe Bobby Knight and the Hoosiers would consider making the Philadelphia Spectrum their permanent home. Bobby capped it off in 76 by turning back Michigan. Today he came out. Tonight he came out in the second half. His Indiana Hoosiers blow away the North Carolina Tar Heels final 67-50. And just as the Hoosiers did the other day against LSU, it turned out to be a second half kind of ball game. He went to the locker room with a one-point lead, came out and outscored the Carolina Tar Heels by a score of 36-24 with Isaiah Thomas talking in 19 second half points. We'll come back with some highlights. We'll get to it right after this commercial break. The Indiana Hoosiers are national champions. They have beaten North Carolina by a final count of 63 to 50 on the strength of a strong second half led by Isaiah Thomas. He finished with 23 points, 19 of those after the intermission. He's standing by with Billy Packer right now. Billy? 
Thanks a lot, Bob Brian. Here we are with the two backcourt guys. Isaiah, first half, you were one for what? I don't know. I knew it was one for something. Well, you had 19 in the second half, one for seven. Super comeback. Randy, your mom seemed to be rather excited. You played a Super Bowl game both in the backcourt and when you got moved up to the front court. Well, thanks. I think everybody here is pretty excited. Uh, this really hasn't sunk in yet. And a guy by the name of Jimmy Thomas didn't do a bad job for you for the two days. No, he didn't. Can I say hello to someone? You can if you want to. You can do about what you want to tonight. <laughs> thanks a lot, Coach Bates, and hello to my family and friends. Okay, thanks a lot. Congratulations to both of you guys. Are you the big winner tonight? You got it, Billy. Hey, Billy Packer, thank you very much. And so Indiana's national champions one more time by a final count of 63 to 50. And although this crowd is delirious right now, it is tough to lose sight of the events in Washington today. Perhaps the fact that this game was even played is the best news we have had tonight because for a time tonight it appeared the game would not be played. It was only played and only televised because the condition of Ronald Reagan was reported good and stable and because the events in Washington turned out for the better for the president after the tragic assassination attempt earlier today. The Indiana Hoosiers are national champions, but you've got to think of the two coaches. Bobby Knight has won it twice in six years. Dean Smith, this is his sixth time to the Final Four, and he is yet to come away a champion. But as Billy Packer stated earlier, anybody who says he can't win the big one, well, they're just living in dreamland. For some final thoughts, let's go back over to Dick and Billy and Al. Gentlemen. Thank you, Brian. And Al McGuire, you're the one person here tonight that really can appreciate what's happening inside both those men, as we said off the top of the show. Well, I feel for, for Dean, but tomorrow morning he'll perk up, and he has a great team coming back. Bobby Knight, it's his Camelot, his, his Shangri-La. But I enjoyed the whole tournament, and I especially enjoyed, Dick, working with you. You're a pro. I even enjoy my battling ramp over here, Billy. <laughs> Billy Packard. You know, the lyrics of This Is It, are appropriate to the whole theme of this tournament. And there's a word there that says, not up to me this time. You know, comes a day in every life that this is it. And what deep meaning that carries, not just for this basketball championship, but for what has happened today. We hope the president recovers quickly. Thank you for being with us, ladies and gentlemen. For Al McGuire, Billy Packer, our thanks to our statistician, Jack Bailey. Indiana University, 63, North Carolina, 50. Brian? Thank you very much. Another superlative year for Dick Enberg, Billy Packer, and Al McGuire. We will look forward, as Dick said earlier, to bringing you the very best in college basketball next season, every Saturday, every Sunday, the very best in college basketball right here on NBC. For Dick, Billy, and Al, I'm Bryant Gumbel. Thanks so very much for joining us. The executive producer of the 1981 National Collegiate Basketball Championship is Don Olmeyer. Our coordinating producer, George Finkel. The telecast of tonight's championship game has been produced by George Finkel and directed by Harry Coyle. Our pregame halftime producer, David Neal. Pregame halftime director, Bob Levy. Feature producers, Richard Klein, Terry Ewert, Les Dennis, and David Hoffman. Our technical directors, Bill Toby and Len Stalker. Associate producers, Peter Rolf and Bill Peters. Associate directors, Randy Wands and John J. Filippelli. Production manager, C. James Crawford. And our unit managers, Joe Ficino, Wanzo Galloway Jr., Leslie Aber, Bob Myers, and Bob Williams. The Indiana Hoosiers are national champions for the second time in the last six years. They have turned back the North Carolina Tar Heels. The final, the Indiana Hoosiers 63, the North Carolina Tar Heels 50. saying thank you so very much for joining us. Now stay tuned for an NBC News special report. It'll be coming up following these messages from your local station and following that report, your local news, except on the West Coast, where the Tonight Show and the Tomorrow Show will be seen at their normal times. Our final again from Philadelphia, Indiana 63, North Carolina 50.